Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today we're playing some Final Girl. How's it going? I think, I think you can hear me today. Hopefully. Hello everybody joining live. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, thank you to these people for supporting this content and uh, allowing me to play some Final Girl for you today. Thanks to everyone that watched the last video and left some kind comments and hit that like button and all that kind of stuff to help me realize that, yeah, I should probably just play more Final Girl and play the next scenario which I was told this is a very difficult one. So let's get ready to die. Yes, yes, death is in the air. Hello, hello. Hello everybody, hello, hello, hello. Happy uh, Wednesday, I think it is. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Intro music is soothing, oh God. Oh God, all right. Uh, yeah, so, uh, if you didn't see the previous episode, we played the first, um, basically the first scenario of the lore and scenario book, uh, series one, uh, there is a link to this below in the video description if you're curious what the hell it is, and, uh, we read the backstory of Hans, the butcher, and we played the first movie or feature film, uh, where he was at camp, spooky trails, no camp, Happy Trails, Camp Happy Trails, uh, against Lori. There's a little story to it. Uh, we met her girlfriend, I forget the names. Is it Lucy? Is Lucy the right name? It was a week ago, okay, all right. Uh, yeah, Lucy. So today, we're gonna read the second one, the intro story, has its own custom setup. But again, if you're looking for that first one to explain more of what we're doing here, uh, and kind of the continuing story that each killer has in these Lawrence scenario books, Go check the video description. Uh, there is a playlist down there with the link to the Final Girl playthrough playlist where all the playthroughs are, so you can find it in there. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, hello everyone. Come on in. All right. Um, I don't know what else to say other than like, uh, let's get set up, I guess, and take a look at the story. So again, this is the Lauren scenario book, and then we read like Hans the Butcher, his intro, and we played Knight of the Pig, which uses the base Hans the Butcher, and uh, his base, um, the location that comes with him, and there's like a custom setup we play, no special rules, and then we're continuing on to the second film, which uses another location, Creech Manor, so if you own Creech Manor, and you own Hans the Butcher, those two boxes, uh, you'd be able to play with what is here, supposedly. And this one has some special rules, very, very minimal. Um, but depending on how well this playthrough does, maybe I'll play next week and play the next one, Vacation from Hell. Um, but that, that, that's up to you guys. That's up to you guys. Make sure you hit that like button. Thanks to all 11 of you who've hit the like button already. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Definitely helps other people find the videos by you clicking the like button. All right, so this is Slaughterhouse. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Yeah, there we go. So we're playing Slaughterhouse. It says, after the events of C Camp Happy Trails, it had taken months for the nightmares to subside. But Lori was finally sleeping through the night again, which is why she was so angry with Lucy. You want me to go where on Halloween? A haunted house? Come on, it'll be fun. They're even doing this crazy promotional stunt where they drop candy onto the house from a helicopter at midnight. Lori thought that this was one of the dumbest things she'd ever heard, but since when uh, had she ever been able to say no to Lucy? The evening started out fine, and the house's scares were utterly benign compared to what she survived. But then she and Lucy got separated. What was new? She found a security guard and was just about to ask him where she could find her girlfriend when a butcher's cleaver lodged itself into the man's neck. Lori backpedaled away from the dark form in the pig mask as it pulled the cleaver out of the guards, uh, out of the guard in a geyser of blood. As she scrambled up the stairs, only one thought was going through her head. Damn it, Lucy. What have you gotten us into? <laughs> awesome. Kenji, what up? Jago, hello. All right, uh, so today we're playing again with Final Girl Lucy, or Final Girl Lori, and her girlfriend Lucy will be part of it, based on the special rules here. Uh, set up as strange trophies. Items are set up as normal. Okay, uh, events, we're gonna have push to the edge, helicopter rescue, no one comes back, and the event card should be in that order, with push to the edge on top, um, which I have them here. 
I move this camera back too far? Probably did. Probably did. All right, so uh, we have no one comes back, helicopter rescue, and then push the edges on top. So we'll reveal that event first. The setup we saw is, and you can double check my setup, strange trophies. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Creech Manor Terror Cards. The trees are alive. It's broken. It is coming. It's coming. Something comes through the wall. All right. I shuffled them up a bit already. Then realized like maybe we should just double check our setup before. Okay. We got it's broken from Creech Manor. Something is coming through the wall. It's coming. It's coming. And where's the other one? The trees are alive. Okay. Those four from Creech Manor, and all the rest should have a pig's head on it, yep. All right, then for um, Han's tarot cards, we've got Unholy Speed. Okay. Uh, horrific Hammer Rush. That sounds fun. Or am I reading that wrong? Uh, yeah, Horrific Hammer Rush. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Horrific Hammer Rush. Oh my, look at all these uh, freaking... Yeah, now I see what's a hard one. Look at look at all this. Look at look at these are all back, everybody. Yeah, we're gonna be rolling uh, fewer dice. Uh, that's a thing. Damn it. Oh, Hans, man. All right. Uh, <laughs> taking souvenirs. Okay. Oh, we had that one before. Um, he just came out of nowhere. Uh, Hans wants me. Oh, he's coming after uh, the uh, Lori more, it looks like, which is kind of thematic. That's cool. He's always wanted me. Yeah. Uh, he's always, uh, he's sorry, he's just standing there times two. Okay, so times two of these, times two of these. That's fantastic. Dang, Nabbit. Uh, then we need, oh, d yeah, we looked at it last time. It's a uh, dark. Dark Obsession and Bloodbath again. So the exact same ones we played in the last scenario. So the double, the double slice business there. And uh, the if he attacks Lori at least once, he'll attack an additional time. So yeah, I don't want that to happen. I gave him his 11 little hearts plus one here for 12. Starting on four horror. Uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like I said last time. I'm gonna use the cardboard tokens. And then I'm gonna put all these big chonky ones uh, in this bag over here. So when, if, if, and when, if, and or when, uh, we get to one of these tokens, uh, it doesn't matter what these are, we'll just draw from the bag for fun. Cause I think that's more fun. Um, I wouldn't do that with the little cardboard tokens cause they're kind of suck, but with the chonky ones, uh, we'll just leave those off to the side. Hopefully only have to draw there from there once when we draw for Hans. The only problem is, the only problem I was thinking about is, uh, normally you would have two drawn out right now and set up. So when we get to one, we have the same odds. Uh, like one would be locked here. But like, I really don't think it matters too much. But like technically when we get to one of these, should we draw one to discard, then draw the second one? So it's like, you know, it's still two, but then like, we'll know information. So we can't do that. So we'll just draw random. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? We'll just draw random. It's all random anyway, but it does change the odds if you don't have one locked when you draw the other one. But it's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna try it out. It'll be fun if we get that far. We may not even have to draw, you know? Uh, what else? Oh yeah, special rules. Special rules. Place the girlfriend event card from Camp Happy Trails above the board and place her special victim meeple in the attic space. So I have the, uh, the special meeple right here in the attic space. I have the girlfriend card just chilling out here to remind us. She will follow you into the killer space while she's in your space. Ah, this will help us. We get plus one die roll for each horror roll. If the girlfriend dies while in your space, uh, five horror, and we pretty much just rage quit at that point. Okay. <laughs> so that'll make up for all these. I guess what they're trying to do is say like, hey, 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 relax, relax, Rob. Don't just quit and rip up the lore book because Hans gets like all of his skull cards are more odds to show up. But the cool part is uh, it actually 
Shuffle all the 12 tarot cards, and we're dealing 10 and placing the remaining two cards face down to the side. So there's a chance maybe these two, for example, maybe they're the ones that leave the game. Uh, what's that over there? No. Anyways, uh, but yeah. Yeah, the masks are back. So plant, like, I don't want to fall into the trap because uh, now it's more likely. Like, you know when you play Hans and you're like, just sometimes you get the bad deck set up and he's just, you know, you're like this the whole game. Um, and you're just like playing distractions and focuses over and over again. You're like just dancing between here and it's like you want to kill yourself. Um, and the game's no fun. But, because uh, any dice game where you roll less dice is not fun. More dice equals fun, equals me spending more money on dice games. You know, it's genius, right? But uh, that's just the way the random works. But this one, we're more likely to get those annoying cards. So, let's not fall into the trap I usually do of trying to fight this down all the time. But we do have to respect it and try to stay in the white at least. Um, is what I think maybe is the play. I don't know, maybe wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know what Creech Manor actually will help with. Uh, against Hans with items too. Uh, I'm not familiar with this. Again, I've only played Creature Manor a couple times. But, um, yeah. Here, let's give this a better shuffle. So he's more focused. Based on these tarot cards, it seems like he's more focused on Lori. Uh, more movement, more uh, horror level, whatever, increase over here. So we're rolling less dice. Uh, the item deck is the same, so we might have actual weapons this time, maybe. But again, that is some bad RNG sometimes that can really hurt. Um, but we do have the girlfriend that's kind of like a plus one die as long as she's with us. But you know what's going to happen. We'll have her with us, and that's when she'll die. And then I hit five horror, and then we're like, oh no. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, uh, remove two cards. Okay, two cards removed. There's our terror deck set up. So in the item deck, okay, we got old revolver. Any other weapons? Any other thing to help us? Trash can for defense. Rope ladders. Oh yeah, I gotta read the rules for Creature Manor. There's like the one-way arrows and stuff, right? Uh, I'm sure it's not a lot. Mysteri oh, ritual dagger. You may discard, what is this? You may discard ritual dagger to kill a victim in your space, increase Bloodlust is normal. If you do, remove all minor dark power cards from play or deal damage to the killer. Uh, I'm just all down with the I can stab him for an extra damage. Um, but, I mean, discarding it for like the final kill is kind of cool. Just like sticking it in him good. Oh, we got the knife and the shotgun. So hopefully these get show up in the game. Now this is a gun. So double-handed. Shotgun cannot modify an action card and must be used without one. Once per turn, you may discard two cards from your hand and roll six dice. Deal hits to each enemy in your space or each star rolled. If at least half of them are blank, discard the shotgun. Oh no. And this is not a horror roll, so there's no rerolling on this. This is not a horror roll. Ugh. Ugh. Can I just butt him with the end of it for just like one bonus hit? Like just give to give him a little little gun butt um, for an extra damage. That'd be nice. Oh god. Yeah. So hollow. Yes, we're playing Halloween. Uh, you know, uh, in, in Michael Myers basically. You know, inside of uh, yeah, the Shining House. Yeah, yeah, the Shining Mansion or whatever. <laughs> Isn't there also a fiance uh, or a fiance card? Fiance card. Did I miss something? What do you mean? Or in here, I, I didn't look at step by step gamer. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, so we need one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There's our items. Oh, look at this. All right, dagger and revolver. Guys, it, things are looking okay. I mean, as best as they could, I guess. Now, where are these things? Uh, we got garage here, ritual dagger. Oh, man. 
Garage, no. Uh, and then what do we got? Closet is a first aid kit for extra heals. That's up here. And then we have uh, Attic is an old revolver. What's, what's it say? The old revolver may only modify the weak action card. Oh, that's not actually that good. Uh, that's not actually that good. Whoops. I mean, it's fine. Better than nothing. Huh. Huh. Now, uh, am I like crazy? What, what is this number on the items again? I don't remember. What is this one? And this has a zero. Oh, the range, right? That's just range. That's weird. Oh, so this can only hit at one range away, not zero to one. Ah, I see. That's why it's confusing me. Okay, ritual dagger at zero. That makes sense. Okay, all right. I get what's happening. So the revolver sucks even more. All right, I get it. So we didn't get the best weapon showing up. I mean, the dagger. I'll take the ritual dagger. That's not that bad. Because it'll help us on, like, uh, retaliates. Oh, this is rough, guys. Uh, I don't know. So we got to get to the girlfriend. That's for sure. We're in the trophy room here. So we start in the trophy room. Killer's here in the foyer. Oh, yeah, we're going to do an event still. Anything else? I don't think so, right? All right. Uh, so the events. Come on. Ugh. Pushed to the edge. They looked at me some somberly, then without speaking, walked over to the window and jumped. I think this is basically Hans throwing him out the window. Roll a die for each victim in a window room. If the roll is a one to four, that victim jumps and is killed. Discard this card. Okay, great. Fantastic. All right. Uh, before that, though, I just want to read uh, the rules for Creech Manor. Make sure there's nothing we're uh, misunderstanding. All right. Uh, one way movement spaces. A few of the spaces have exits uh, in one direction. There are three of them. These spaces have arrows and lines indicating which direction you can move. These spaces still considered adjacent in both directions. So we got window, window. So these are one-way window out. Uh, this one is uh, two-way. There's a ladder here, I guess. And Oh, one right here, um, leading into this bathroom here. So you can go drop down through the ceiling, but you can't go back up. Okay, you're not allowed to move against an arrow. You cannot climb up the tire swing and go back in the window, nor can you go up through the hole in the ceiling in the washroom on the left side of the board. Enemies and victims are also subject to these rules. The rope ladder item, if used, is the only exception and turns a one-way space into a normal space. Rope ladder item, okay. Uh, we also have window spaces, so that's the little blue symbol, blue symbol, blue symbol here, the ones that lead outside. Okay, it says, window spaces are a new type of space on the Creech Manor location board. There are two window spaces on the right side of the house and one on the left side. Window spaces do not have any special rules, but many terror and event cards will specifically Reference them, like our throw them out the window card. The ladder. Cards that refer to the ladder are specifically referring to the ladder on the outside of the building that connects to the left exit space. So this ladder. Okay. Uh, and the washroom on the third floor. The ladder leading to the attic is an artistic nature only and is never impacted by any game effects. Uh, this one right here. Just background. Background stuff. Inside and outside. All spaces are considered to be inside, except for the three uh, green spaces outside. Okay. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's all we gotta know. That's all we gotta know. Alright, sweet. Yeah. Hello, Kate. Hello. Alright. So what's the play? What is the play? We need to get to the girlfriend for extra dice rolling. Um, that would take one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five to get to the attic. What the heck? Or do we just start rescuing people and leave her in the attic for now? 
But then if we had her with us, oh my god, extra dice rolls on like movements and focuses and distractions and searching and oh my god, it's so tempting. But then if we're caught with her and she dies, oh my. I feel like she's the key. She is the key since they added all the freaking masks. The hockey masks are everywhere. Mm, I want to get Lori flipped over too so we can use her special ability. But I don't know if in this playthrough that's like achievable for sure since the outdoor spaces are and all the they purposely put it so all the um, victims are kind of uh, a little far from it. So actually movement seems like if we're going that route, but also searching is now back on the menu. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh yeah, any recommendations? Throw them in the chat. I am down. So down. All right. Uh, we don't need this anymore. Let's throw that over here. Okay. Yeah, we got to get to it, right? So five movement, though. It's going to take a little bit. And do, here's the problem, too. Do we, as we move along there, do we bring hostages with us? We could bring two with us now, uh, like the normal rules, not like the last episode where we were kind of stuck right away, where we could only bring one with us at a time. So I need to remember that that's how the game works again. Um... So we can lug them around, but I don't want to get trapped in the attic. The attic's kind of like a dead end, but it is a search space. So we could grab like the old revolver there. But man, the garage and the ritual dagger. Holy. Holy. Huh. Oh yeah. Okay, let's do the event. Yes, I almost forgot the event. I was like, man, let's... Some, oh wait. Oh yeah, we gotta roll the dice, right? So let's roll for the top guy. So what is it, a one to four? They jump out the window? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> all right, this guy didn't jump. We got a six. All right, don't use up all our luck here, Rob. All right, this one. Two. All right, great. Already one up. All right, bye, we lost a victim. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I don't know who's playing this on extreme horror mode. I would assume if you like played the same like scenario or box over and over and over again and got really good at it and like knew what to expect from the terror deck, just knew how to like manipulate the game enough that you're like, you're just so good at it, then you need to bump it up. But like, the problem is, uh, who the hell's playing extreme horror mode when there's so much content for the game? So when you own so much different content, especially bonus content too from the crowdfunding and all that, it's just like you can just, it's so unpredictable and like you can make so many combinations. It's like that alone, you're like playing blind all the time almost because it's like, how do you remember everything for every killer, every item for every location, every strategy? And then you start mixing in different final girls and stuff. I don't see a need for extreme horror mode unless you're like owned one box, one killer, one location, and you just played it over and over again. You didn't have any extra cards add in. And you're just like, okay, I'm kind of bored. I, I beat it every time. Then maybe bump it up and like give yourself a challenge. But I don't see that with only playing it casually or mixing it up all the time. It's always like a new challenge. All right. I think we're just walking, right? Now, hold on, hold on. I'm looking here, there's these two victims right beside the killer, right? We know he's not really going after these kind of guys, but he'll come after me. Now, I know it's probably dumb, but part of me is thinking like, I can move one, two, and three, and I can rescue two of them. And then, four, five, six, oh, then I'm back where I was. No, never mind. yeah, yeah. I was thinking like I could get to the attic faster up here, but the one way it definitely messes with my head. There's also going to the garage that way. But again, we'll be so close to the killer. I don't know if that's smart. Because he's coming after me like completely. 
these are tempting these are very tempting one two three which is possible literally on the first turn but not likely i don't think yeah we're only rolling two dice yeah i think we just go towards the the girlfriend <sighs> yeah let's go towards the girlfriend all right let's just start uh, and walk it out here. See where we get on our first walk. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's cruddy. Uh, do I care that much though? I could just move a space, lose a health, lose two time. That's kind of sucky, right? Uh, yeah, let's pitch one time, one space. Walk again. That's yeah, going to take forever to get up there. Yep, 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 yep. Um, yeah, this is where things fall apart because I'm debating just tossing these two in, but that only moves me one space up. But that would get me away from the killer if he were to move twice, let's say, because he only moves once each, so one, two. Um, but then I lose my focuses and I'm already this high, and in, in like one card pull, we're like in trouble. And I'm also only at five. I want to get distraction next in a sprint, but I'm not gonna have any cards to play with that. So I feel like I lose two though. It's pretty much the same. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a really rough start, but it, I mean, let's just go with it for now. No. No, if it's going to be rough, I I'm leaning into the rough. Let's do it. Uh, let's move one space. We'll take zero. I'll uh, lose a health. And then uh, two time loss. And we'll do a focus once here. Which probably will lose us two time. Um, but it didn't. Uh, only lost us one. Uh, whoops, wrong way. Um, so what am I sitting at? Two money. Uh, this won't help us with the sprint, but I will toss this, uh, for one extra money. And then we'll just buy a sprint and a close call. Okay. Reset. Uh, he stabs. No one's home. Place Hans in the... F Whoa! What? What? Are this target possible? Please don't say it's the girlfriend space. Please don't, but it probably is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 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 it's there. Oh, and it has the most victims too. Are you serious? <laughs> Today's stream was shortened by Hans, Hans the Butcher. Uh, so I took an extra horror, great, and I'm gonna draw the next tarot card. So if he draws a kill, uh, or a move to me and kill, I'm beside him now. <sighs> it's broken. And more, pff, come on. Place, place the broken ladder token, covering the ladder on the board. The ladder may no longer be used, and the spaces connecting to it are no longer considered adjacent. And we're at five, just like that. And two horror cards gone. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh God. Okay, broken ladder token. <laughs> Dear Hans, you're an a-hole. All right, there we go. Uh, broken ladder. I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. Oh my God. Um, what am I doing? He's gonna stab and we could just say he stabs one of the regular victims, right? That is definitely happening right away. 
Oh my god. Well, the sprint needs to happen. I need to get two spaces to even get in there. I can bring extra victims for the slaughter. <laughs> but to move two space, I need one success. I have a reroll, one die or all. Shortest stream ever? Possibly. We'll find out. <laughs> you guys want me to play the game, okay? You guys were asking for it. <laughs> this is what you get. <laughs> My pain and suffering. Uh, okay. I do like horror movies where the, the killer wins. Uh, so it's good. It's kind of cool that it can happen. Uh, I don't know if we count bounces. But whatever. Alright. So we, get, we got our success. Uh, so we can move the two spaces. I probably bring everyone with me, right? Or is that silly? Now, here's the problem. Because we're bringing them into a dead end, right? But, but... Um, and we can't go this way, so I shouldn't bring this guy with me, but like, is it good to just bring them? I don't think so, right? I don't think it's smart. Maybe one of them. Since we're about to lose one. No, let's leave them. One, two... I'm here to save you. All right, let's lose a uh, time. That's my huge turn. All right, five monies. Let's shop with five monies. Uh, I think uh, retaliate is probably the play. Oh, but he's going to attack them, so we can't save a victim. He pr oh, but he could attack me off this, right? What do we do? Or do we... Ah, man... Five money. And I still want to search here too. Like, I don't want to just run, but I probably should. Maybe I run to the garage. What are we doing? We've got to assume what he might do to us. A guard probably minimum. And a sprint or a, a guard and a search. He could attack twice, but he'll, he'll only attack them once and maybe me from here. But probably, we'll assume he will attack me for sure. Distract? Yeah, I wish. But what if he just stays here, slapping me? I should have probably bought, brought more people. Yeah, I'm going to bring one more uh, victim. Yeah, yeah, I'll say I brought one along. Keep him busy. Protect the girlfriend. I don't know. Meet shields. Yeah, guys. I don't know what to do here. I feel like... I feel like I could grab retaliate, but then he doesn't attack me. Then that was a big waste of money. Distraction could be a thing. And then I would have two remaining. So I could search while I'm here to try to grab the revolver. But that could be a waste. Like, if the revolver's not going to be that great... But it could be, actually. I want that dagger, though, I think. I should just run, right? I should go distraction and a sprint. And we just run. But... That doesn't cover my butt when he attacks me. Guard search and close call, says Joseph. Guard search and close call. Now here's the thing, like the old revolver, as great as it is, like I'm sitting here with the killer, so he's, I can't use this against him here. It only modifies the weak action card. So literally in this situation, it's useless. It would only be cool if I try to run away from him and I'm one space away. But most likely I'll get to move more spaces and I want to take advantage of that. So I might as well just gun for the garage, right? But then if I don't take this now and I don't get to go to the garage and I don't have a weapon, then I'm like sad panda. I'm going to regret it the whole time. So it's like, I don't want to get greedy, try to grab it, 
And also, do not forget my favorite symbols uh, to hate are on the search card, right? So if I don't need a search uh, and I'm not in a good spot to search, maybe not risking a search because it sometimes just doesn't work out. So, maybe we put a guard in here. This was already in my hand. Uh, so this is, this is five. And then we get all our other cards back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, let's just play it kind of safe. Because like this, this uh, whole he came out of nowhere thing was not, that's insane that that happened right there. But we'll, we'll just go with it. I would love to lower this. Maybe we'll get a, it a bit down with the focus. But I, I think we're playing in this range the whole game. As we've just learned to do with Hans. Getting in the green is like, yeah, right. And, and we're, we're stacked, we've got a stack deck. Uh, okay. So he's gonna stab, he kills this here. This goes up by one. He now increases horror, we're at six. Oh yeah, I forgot that was gonna happen. All right. The trees are alive. If you're in a window space, then you lose a health. If all, vic uh, all victims in a window space are killed, get the frig out of here. Okay, so he still moves for one, hits for two. If at least one victim was killed, raise horror. We're now in the red, rolling one die. Fantastic. Oh, and we're going to draw an event card. <laughs> helicopter rescue. Place a helicopter token on the roof of the house. Once during the game, you may move from the attic to the helicopter as though they were adjacent. Oh, I didn't read this before. But then again, how, like this card might not even been in the deck, it, you know? Interesting. So you treat that you may move from the attic to the helicopters, though they're adjacent. Any victims, or Carolyn, we're not playing with Carolyn, uh, with you may be saved. Unless you have saved Carolyn, you must return to the attic. And the, what the frig? Any victims with you may be saved. Unless you have saved Carolyn, but we don't have Carolyn in our game, you must return to the attic. And the token must be removed. The helicopter is not considered an exit space. Discard this when the helicopter token leaves play. So we could just save victims one time, right? That's what this is saying. Yeah. So if we choose to save any victims, helicopter leaves. I think that's what's happening. I think that's what's happening. Uh, all right. So we got our little helicopter token up here in the attic. Okay, on the house. Great. Can't believe we're in the red. Well, I guess I should believe we're in the red. This is now like instantly distraction was probably the right play. Uh, yeah, he didn't even attack us. Like, uh, so frustrating. All right. Um, so let's save some victims, I guess. So, okay, am I like crazy? I'm assuming I have to use a move action to move to the helicopter, okay? Because it says you may move from the attic to the helicopter as though they were adjacent, okay? So I need at least one movement point. Then I can save some victims. But because I haven't saved Carolyn, I must return to the attic and the token must be removed. So I feel like I only need one point of movement to do this whole saving thing, and then it force moves me back to the attic, right? So I don't need to move, I just need one move minimum to get this done, and I'm back in the attic, right? That's what I feel like this is telling me. That's the way I'm gonna play it. Unless you guys say, nope, there's a correction online, AJ says this, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like if the helicopter leaves, you're, in, you're floating in the air, you gotta go back, right? You can't hide up there, because then the game's broken. All right, so then we're going to do a walk. We're with our girlfriend, so we get two dice, right? Because we get a bonus from her. Or focus first, probably, right? Oh, but that sucks, too. All right, two dice on a focus. Come on, man. Uh, so do we count it when it bounces out or not? <laughs> Frig. 
I gotta be consistent, I guess. Oh, okay, we're still good. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, five and a three. I mean, I'll just go with the single for now, I guess. So we lose one time, we go back to six. Okay, now we're rolling extra. We got three dice we're rolling now. Count it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know, you gotta be consistent, whatever you do. But I, last time I kept forgetting what I did, and then I was just like, ah, uh, I don't know. I need it closer or something. I gotta do the two hand and then drop it, I think is the best way to make it not bounce on this table. Uh, so we're just walking. So what do we need? We just need one, we want a success, but we're even good without one. We got one. All right, we could have two if we wanted, but we don't need that extra space of movement because we're gonna get the free move back, right? So I think I'll just go with the lose one, keep a single success. I'm gonna move one space, I'm gonna take two of the regular uh, victims. I think this is crazy though. Oh, you know what? I could get two points of movement. Maybe it's smarter here actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am gonna do that. Uh, oh, but then maybe our sprint would be better to do it for. Mm. Yeah, let's do short rest, weak attack, and we'll get two movement. I still move this down one for it, right? Yep. And so we get two successes, so we'll move two spaces, so I'll use one point to move up. I'll save. And what are we doing with this save? Probably dropping horror one. I could get an extra move. It's probably the play. Yeah, I'm gonna take movement now. So I'll, I'll earn a move point. How I'm gonna do, I'm like banking movement points is in my mind how I'm playing it. Uh, so that's that. But uh, the helicopter flies away. This is gone. Then um, I get forced move back after saving. I have two points of movement is how I'm gonna play it. Uh, so I will move one. Probably. Two, okay. <sighs> I think I just book it down this way uh, and leave this guy here for food uh, for Hans. I don't I don't care about the first aid kit in the closet that much. I'm going all in on the dagger and or saving these guys down here. So, in that case, we're all about movement right now. So let's uh, sprint. In this game, I count everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob needs a dice tower. Uh, yeah, I still haven't got the replacement too many bones one, but that actually, the black and red would look pretty good with this game, actually, matching the dice, tri uh, the mats and everything. No, I don't have it. Again, I could glue the one that I have that's like busted, but I just have, I keep forgetting about it. But yeah, I don't know. Anytime Chip Theory sends me anything, it takes like literally over a month to get it. So, uh, minimum. So, it gets stuck in the mail. US Postal Service junk uh, rates. Well, a 112 is a great roll on a sprint. Oh my God. So we're gonna lose time and reroll all of them. The frig man. Actually, no, I'm gonna roll these ones. Use the Kyle strategy, roll some different dice. Oh my God, 112 again. Yep. Don't play like me, ever, okay? Learn from my mistakes. Same dice, no, eh, let's do a mix. So not only is this one stacked against us to be a hard one, but this time my dice luck uh, is like, yeah, it's kind of also against me here. One success, after all that, I get one success. I could have two, which I probably should roll with. Yep, I'm gonna roll with it. 
Uh, so we get to move through. Oh, yeah, hold on, hold on. We'll end the turn when we finish because it'll drop the time one more. And I don't think I can. Oh, maybe I can spend a card right now to raise it. So it doesn't end, but does that really matter? This is so bad, guys. So bad. Uh... Yeah, I think I got to finish resolving the card, so. Um, do we want an extra point of movement? Hold on. One, two, three will bring us here, but if hopefully Hans can't reach us. Yeah, let's go. Let's go all in. Uh, we're going to do the walk and the focus, I think. And that will give us uh, two successes. So three spaces. One, you stay up there. Two, three. So we're all here in this same little room here. We're one, two away from saving them, which I debate just trying right now with a roll. But oh no, the turn ends, right? The turn ends. Maybe I keep the walk and get rid of the guard. Let me count. Let me count. One, oh, sorry. One, two, three, four. He's five away. No way he reaches me, right? But there's, I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do this. Yeah, let's YOLO. YOLO, YOLO, YOLO. So the turn ends. We have zero money. Uh, we're holding a walk. Fantastic. And I've left myself with no defense. This is awesome. <laughs> Risking it for the biscuit. All right, so he stabs. Uh, oh yeah, we're done spending. We literally get nothing. We have a walk. All right, uh, he stabs, nobody's home. Draw a tarot card, please. Don't kill us. It's coming, it's coming. So he, he gets to move three spaces to me. And, oh, good thing we brought the victims with us to clear the spaces. He would kill one victim in each space the killer passes through, including its current and final spaces. If, he, oh my God, okay. One, two, three. Thank Jeebus. All right, we made it there. Yeah, he would need two more movement, but thankfully he only moves one point of movement right now. If this came up later in the game and he ended in our space, he would kill someone there too. Wow. Okay, we're good, we're good. He's closer though. A lot closer than I thought he would get there. All right, so let's play our walk. <laughs> we get to roll three dice, that's not bad. Maybe we get the two successes and we can save a couple people. All right, we'll only save one actually. We'll bring our girlfriend with us, I think, right? But it's risky then, it's risky being with just our girlfriend in the same space because then she might get killed forcefully if he targets a victim, right? But I feel like there was like no victim targeting except for this text box kind of stuff. But I could be wrong. Yep. Nothing. Uh, so I can move one space and lose a health or just lose and lose two time or just lose two time. Uh, let's just move one space. Lose a health and lose two time. This is so bad. So bad. But I should I shouldn't be doing this with only one card in hand. That's like bad plays, but it's all fine. All right, four money. Four money. Well, we get our free cards back here. Four money. I feel like at this point, he's one, two, three away. Could he reach me right now? Probably not. I think I'm going double sprint, man. And we just try to save a bunch here. Or we play like, if we can save one, I can get Sprint for free here, actually. Yeah, maybe we leave Sprint there as like a pull. So for four, this is two. Or do we just go to the garage right now?
and we just try to get two spaces and search. Oh yeah, distraction too. Yeah, this is going to raise horror for sure. But I don't want to just sit here. So many options, so many options. It's like I want to save people, I want to get a dagger, I want to defend myself, I want to attack the killer. I, I want to get victims saved so I can flip, but I, that might not be an option actually. That, this might be a lost cause, I probably shouldn't focus on that. Unless I'm going to save my girlfriend. That could be the key. That could be the key. My girlfriend's giving me extra die, right? So I want to keep her with me, but I feel like that's a trap. But I have the chance of saving four victims right here. I mean, if I'm lucky. And that would be the four I need to flip. And that gives me an extra damage, which is, might be better than extra dice, like an extra die. And that extra damage is like having the weapon, plus if I get the dagger. So if I just save her, then I don't have this risk of going up five horror. But having that extra die is like, oh my god, I think it's needed, like you need to keep her alive. Double sprint and flip. Yeah, like this is an option, right? So saving all four of them and, and just like not rely, we're not worrying about these guys anymore. And if I can get them further away and, and this guy's like, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, the problem is I need to make sure the most victims is like at least a tie so that we only have one victim in the foyer. And what, how would I need for that? One, two, three, four, five. I need like five points of movement. So it's like two sprints and one has to work out and I can't hit this red. Yeah, it is greedy and it's silly and I don't have rerolls if I take two sprints. Oh, oh no, but I can get a second sprint for free during the turn. Yeah, so we're gonna take one sprint and two rerolls. That's the play. That's the play. Yeah, let's try to save the victims. I just don't know if I should save the girlfriend or I keep her with me. I can keep her with me for a while, but if the killer comes in my space and he gets a choice, like it, he it, this this ability right here, right? If he's in the space with me and my girlfriend, he'll kill my girlfriend first with this ability alone, right? So I kind of can't do that, so I should just save her. I should just save her. Because if I hit the five horror here, it's over, right? There's like nothing I can do. But the other play is to keep her alive and just keep another victim with me all the time. And I don't rescue them. Like rescuing victims is, a, if you're going to play the girlfriend uh, uh, line of play, you need to keep uh, the victims alive just for meat shields, I think. So yeah, I don't know. That's my theory. All right. Back to six. Killer. No one to stab. Terror card. Oh, now he goes after victims. So all that just went down the toilet. We risked it that he wouldn't get a victim killing card. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, he moves two and double stabs. Reach victim killed. An extra bloodlust. Yeah, it's over, guys. It's over. That's crazy. So, uh, one, two, stab, stab. Okay, and that's one, two, three, four. We're in the red. And he moves for two now and hits for three. And he's beside us. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a bad play. Uh, yeah, that we got <laughs> we got wrecked there. So yeah, it's definitely the play was to keep rolling with the girlfriend thing, going running over here and searching. So we still can do that because we can still pull a search if we rescue somebody uh, to take an action card up. But we probably don't have enough movement for that. So. Let's just try to get to this room, and that's it. I think. And we'll get some focuses uh, going. Yeah. 
Let's just do that. Cause I, I, I don't know guys. I, I think we're kind of screwed. Double success though. Okay, we're back here. One, two time. Okay, sweet. All right, that's a nice one. Let's focus again. Three dice this time. Okay. Short rest, weak attack. Uh, to get one down and one loss. All right. Now we're gonna try a sprint. Three dice. One, one, two. Double success, thank you. Uh, one down here. Okay, three spaces. So I'll get greedy. We're not rescuing anybody. Yeah, we'll just go there. Um, did I lose the time for that? We went up two to eight. Uh, we went down one to seven. We lost two to reroll. That's five. We did one for sprint rat four. Yep, we're good. We're good. So here's what I have a walk in this, but I'll hold these because these will help me with searching. That's our goal now is to get the ritual dagger. And we're full in defensive mode, trying to kill him with retaliates, furious strikes, all that kind of stuff. But the problem is we won't have much money and we're gonna have trouble with horror rolls. And we only have one meat shield, only one meat shield. So like if he's in our space and does this like twice, we're dead. So the revolver probably was the play because we need to stay out of his space so that this is not firing off, but it, it will. And that's the problem. I think we're screwed. We need the revolver. I, I was right. I was right, we should have did that. Okay. But we'll see. I don't know what's happening here. This is so unpredictable. Uh, so uh, let's spend four on a search for two. Uh, we get the walk for free. So we have two more. A guard? Guard. Yep. Back to six. Stab, nobody home. One, two. Uh, and he moves tw yeah, he's here. Yep, 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 yep. He's just standing there. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay. We can search while he's in our space, right? There's, is there anything that stops us from that in this game? Every game kind of does it a little different, but... Search... Uh, searching, 14. Doesn't say no. Doesn't say no, but I, I scan quickly. I don't think you, I think you can. Let me know in the chat if I'm completely cheating, but uh, all right, I'm gonna try to search. Two dice only, oh, we don't have a focus anymore. Yeah, this is bad guys. Dagger. Take the top item, okay. Ritual dagger. And then we lose the time. Um, walk. Do I make it two spaces? I don't think it matters. One or two, it doesn't matter. I just need to not be in this space. Yeah, let's not push it. Uh, so we lose one and move one space. Yep, that's my turn. Four money. Four money. 
Retaliate? You got it. Yeah, the terror deck does suck. That's what makes this really hard. Also, the house, like the moving around the house is very annoying. Like where the search rooms are and where the outdoor spaces are relative to each other and how many points of movement it takes to get around. Like, yeah, there could be plays where I ran out the door, but like you also get punished for being on window spaces. The ladder's busted. So like, yeah, it's very crazy. It's definitely a different feel than the other maps, which is, it does, does a good job. Okay. So we get all these. Yep. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. He stabs, nobody's home. Terror card. Hans wants me. He always wanted me. Yeah, right. All right. So he's definitely moving towards me. Three, up to two spaces. Then he stabs for three. And since he attacks me once, he's going to attack an additional time thanks to Dark Obsession. So let's try to survive two attacks from Hans. Retaliate. Uh, oh, I only rolled two dice too. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Oh, we got a success. We can reduce his attack by two or I can pitch two cards to prevent it all. I kind of am okay with one damage. But let's see how guard works. Guard, if it reduced by two, I only take one. And then I'm rolling extra dice, which I'm okay with. So I'm, I'm going to take a health loss. I got I to gotta play risky at this point. It's like, yeah. Uh, then I hit him. Oh, but they would hit him back for twice if I threw the other one in, right? It would hit him back for, or an extra hit, right? Oh, should I throw away two cards for an extra hit? So next turn I need to like weak attack, walk, and two cards. Focus would be nice. Yeah, there's too much. Too much to do, man. No, I gotta take what it is. I gotta take what it is. Two health gone. I can't spend too many resources. And I lose one. Okay. Then he attacks again for three, and I'll just try to guard it. Two dice. Double success, ignore all damage. Kind of wanted to get hit by one, but it's okay. All right, our turn. Hopefully this doesn't end our turn right here. Or should I focus first? Probably should focus first. Yeah, let's focus first. Uh, <laughs> Alright, still a star. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll drop one. Lose a time. Okay, then we're going to weak attack. Three dice now. We got a pitch. Piece of <clears throat> Short rest and a focus. Uh, and this will deal him two damage. We lose the health. But our turn is not over. And then this walk better freaking work. Uh, but we do roll an extra die right now. It's so rolling four dice on a walk. With a reroll card in hand, that's it. Reroll is success. One success. That's all I needed, and I'll take it. Uh, but hold on. If I could move two... Nah, I'm not saving anybody, so... We'll go to the foyer. And we lose a time. All right. So we have four time to spend, right? Four time to spend. Well, the guard is one. But I don't, I don't think we'll survive the attack. So we're kind of in trouble. 
Because he'll double attack us and, and we're dead. Uh, unless we have a extra life. Guard and what? Or sprint? We just... No, he's going to attack us right now. Guard. I need like another card to pitch. Oh yeah, I got this too. Long rest? If I threw away that? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. We gotta hope he just doesn't attack us, but like... I don't know. Guard. What can we use next turn? For two. I guess to just take a reroll, lose a lose one. Yep. Guys, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, uh, we're back to six. He stabs, no one home, draws card that I hate. Horrific hammer rush. Uh, yeah, I think we're in trouble here. If there are no victims on the board, discard. Yeah, I think we're gonna hit the finale card. Yeah, it's probably over here. All right, let's see how bad this is. So, he moves here. He kills twice. One of them is our girlfriend. So let's deal with the bloodlust increase for that. So that's one and two. That raises the horror once. Okay. Oh, he's going to heal like fully. Okay. So that's bloodlust moving. For each victim killed, I go up uh, one horror here. And for each one, this is going to go up once. Uh, one and two. He'll recover one health. And we discard the next terror card. And was that it? No, there had to be more. Did I move this up twice? No, I think I did it right. That's discarded. Oh, he only healed one so far. What was I thinking? Oh, this. This is what I was thinking. Yeah, the girlfriend thing happens, right? Yeah, so he's going to heal one, two, three, four, five more. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so he's full at twelve. And uh, discard the next tarot card five times. There's no more. That means uh, in the end phase, this will get revealed. So now he's just going to like rip us apart. Uh, okay. So he didn't attack us though. That's great. Uh, our turn. Six money. We need retaliate. And we need like furious strike. Those, that's like eight. That's not going to happen. Um, yeah, we're just done, but let's see how far we can go. Uh, so I'll just... Oh, if I pass? No, no matter what, he's attacking me three times right now. So I... Yeah, I got to pass. I got to take all these just to survive one more turn, maybe. Maybe. Okay, back to six. Oh, yeah, I get some of this back, too. Uh, what do we have in hand? One, two, three... Four, five, six. Okay, maybe we could have pitched some stuff. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, if we pitch the walk, go up to seven. Close call, go up to eight. Then we get... No, I don't think it matters, actually. No, that does none of that matters. No, we just take... Uh, 
One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So what are we not taking? Yep. Okay. Uh, his turn. Oh yeah, we sh if we get out of his space though, no, it doesn't matter because he's still moving and attacking us. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm done buying. This is at six. He stabs me three times. First time, we're gonna retaliate, and I get to roll only uh two dice. <laughs> Uh, sure. But I think I still die because uh, it reduces, if I get one success, it only reduces the attack by two. He's hitting for five. And that gets resolved first before we deal damage back. So here we go. Let's draw our first token. What are we going to get? Three health. No, we're dead. <laughs> we got wrecked. Yeah, so there's definitely definitely a couple of moments for sure in the play where I discussed like three options and it looked like I always picked the completely worse one based on what tarot card got flipped or what dice I rolled or a mix of both. But I don't know, like, going back, like, I don't know. There was a more victim killing than I planned for, which makes sense with the girlfriend risk. When I realized trying to save the girlfriend is probably the right play, it was too late. Uh, grabbing the revolver could have been okay because it can attack at range, and if we're playing the game of constantly moving one away from him so we don't get his regular attack, I can then hit him at range and maybe, uh, like... I don't know if it's possible to get Lori on her other side either in the way this is laid out with the ladder breaking and stuff. The helicopter thing, I thought, okay, it's going to turn around, but I don't know, man. Like, there's probably items that I like, I'm, I may be, like a knife in the attic would have been nice, but that was also in a garage. What else? Oh, rope ladder. Okay. That could have helped us make like one of these a two way. Padlock, rabbit's foot. Okay, whatever. First aid kit. Ancient text. No. Shotgun. Oh, this is. If I had this, maybe I would have tried to uh, save with Lori, right? Once per action, you may move a victim from an adjacent space to your space. So you can do that every phase. So I can kind of have someone follow me without me using the, like I could basically have almost kind of have three move with me instead of just two, kind of. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, this, this one's definitely a challenging one. I can see that just based on the tarot cards alone with how Hans works. Uh, what did we not have in here, actually? Oh, he never would have moved extra speed or got extra health, so that's kind of lucky, but... I mean... And then he always wanted me. I don't know, that's a challenging one. I don't know what, like... Hmm... Oh, I guess they have this in here in case the girlfriend, you don't go and get her. <laughs> Place the skull token in the attic. All victims in the attic are killed. Whenever a victim enters the attic, they're killed immediately. And of course, that's where the girlfriend starts, right? So if you don't go get the girlfriend, she could die this way, probably. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this one's tough. I feel like this is one of the ones where you, like, you add in, uh, like, Lori's special weapon. Uh, yeah. Like, we should have played with this, maybe. But it's not, like, the greatest, but... I don't think it would have helped us too much. Because it might not even show up, right? So... 
But yeah, this is a tough one. I don't know if any of you have beaten this one, you're watching this later, leave in the comments below, like, what did you, how, what was your line of play? Like, what did you value? Did you, like, try to rescue victims quickly before, like, the ladder breaks? Did you get just lucky in your deck? Like, do you keep horror down? Do you just keep the girlfriend with you the whole time and, like, stay as far away from the killer as possible? Like, he can freaking jump. That was crazy. That first turn jump, I knew I was in trouble. Oh, man. <laughs> Candle to get your chakras realigned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the dice rolling is out of my hands, right? So even with bad dice rolling, if if I maybe chose some different cards and some different um like priorities, I feel like it could have worked out a little different. But the, this this comboing with my decisions, like every time I made a decision, I was like, as long as he doesn't do this, we can do that. And then it's like flip. Oh, okay, that totally wrecks everything I chose. So then not only are like bad dice rolls hurting me, but my own choices were hurting me based on my next turns not being as good because I'm playing with cards that now don't really do anything to help me as, as impactfully as I want them to, right? Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I can see why people were saying this one was really hard. Uh, yeah. And don't ask me to replay it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But I will play the next one. I will move on, okay? I need to cleanse my palate of this scenario. But, uh, yeah, I could see replaying it, though, to try to, like, figure it out. But uh, people are saying it's, like, the toughest scenario, period. But, like, I'm trying to think, like, could you tweak it? Could you tweak it at all, maybe? I don't know. But I do like the thematics of the girlfriend, like being in the attic, you gotta help her and all that stuff. Um, but yeah. So next week, I guess we'll play the Vacation from Hell. Tomorrow we're gonna be playing some Eldritch Horror again, if you wanna join us for that. Uh, Lucas, this is not a, it's, okay, this is the problem. Uh, it's not a campaign game technically, in the sense that nothing you do in one scenario affects the next one, but it's got like a story kind of campaign to it to kind of use some of the products you have uh, to kind of mix and match them and give you special scenarios set up with specific cards. I explained all of it in the last episode. Check the playlist down below. Watch the first little bit. I'll go through how the lore book works and all that. But it's more of just like separate scenarios, but that are joined by a story telling the story of a killer. That's the quickest way I can explain it. Um, so yes, we're going to continue the story to see where Han's journey goes. Uh, but this one ended in Lori dying, but I guess in horror movie fashion, maybe we didn't see Lori die for sure. Maybe Lucy didn't really die. I don't know. Stay tuned for next episode and we'll find out where the story goes from here. Uh, in the next one, Vacation from Hell. Uh, where we're going to... What, what is that one? What is Vacation from Hell in? Uh, it's like a... It's a graveyard or something symbol, like a tombstone. Sacred Groves. We'll be in the Sacred Groves uh, with Lori is there. Lori is there. And the setup card is Family Day. <laughs> We're going on a family vacation <laughs> for the next one. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, it was a dream. Yes, Brian, it was a dream. It was all a dream. I want to see how they explain it in the next one. Like how it just keeps going. It's like, or, or is it like a reboot? Is it like a reboot, you know? It's like 10 years later, we like got a new actress, you know? We're like trying to start the franchise over a new director. <laughs> but then we're like still caring about the story of Hans and continuing it. Bernardo's here. Greetings from my home game room slash home office looking to at how, sorry, many in-shrink games I have and acknowledging that I don't really need to buy Final Girl. Yep, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You buy whatever and always, almost all of us have a game in our collection we can pull out and play that will entertain us. And some of them you haven't played in so many years and forget that they're like discovering a new game anyway. Um, but then some of them also have design flaws and if they're older, Maybe they're not as good rule books to like learn them and get them to the table. So maybe that statement is not fully accurate, but 
There's gotta be something in your collection you can pull shrink off of, or even just a game you played before. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing this because I'm having fun selfishly. Uh, I know you guys wanted to see me play more Final Girl based on the comments last stream and on the comment section too. Um, so I'll, I'll keep playing it. I definitely want to keep playing it for October uh, and continue the story of Hans. But uh, damn, <laughs> that one is rough. Uh, but yeah, I probably played some bad decisions there that could have been slightly different. But the, the, the rolling of 112, what does that number mean? Because I rolled it like eight times, I feel like. It wasn't 221. It wasn't 222. It wasn't 111. It was 112 or 211 or 121. What is the what is the meaning of these numbers? What is it the what are the dice gods trying to tell me? I don't know. But uh yeah. Uh Studio says the game didn't work out but Fun to watch. Made me get my Hostage Negotiator career box. I revisited your previous games of Hostage Negotiator. Fun stuff. Yeah, I love Hostage Negotiator. I do love that game. I love the theme of that game too. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely like... They're both good in, the, in their own way. But they're very so similar. But uh, it depends what kind of theme you're into too. But that career stuff is pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. Alright. I think that's it for me today. I'm going to get out of here. We'll be back playing Elder Tour tomorrow. Uh, on the weekend, more Arkham Horror Living Card Game playing through our Innsmouth campaign. Join me for that. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.